to upload, we go to Build, Upload, Mesh Model, find our file, and we get an upload window. We're going to call this Cube Test. Now we're uploading a very simple model, so we're just going to leave this for now at the defaults. We'll talk about the level of details and all this later. You need to make a physics choice and for now, again just for this test, let's choose high. And the last choice we have is what size our model is going to be. What we saved was 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters. If we want to make this larger or smaller than that, we can do it this way. You can also type in something, or you can leave it at the full size. We're going to calculate the weight and the fee. The least fee that can be for a mesh model in Second Life is 11 lindens. We are on the beta grid, however, where things are free, so that really doesn't matter. If you're an open sim, then your upload cost would be zero. And on most grids at this point in time, uh, you wouldn't have any numbers here at all because things just don't count in OpenSim, <laughs> which is handy in some ways and not so handy in others. So our land impact for our cube is going to be half a land impact point. There are three different points to the upload. Those are the server, which is always going to be 0.5 or more, the physics, and again this is very low physics, because it's just a cube, and then our download cost. And you can see that's very, very, very little. When we make something more complex, you'll see those numbers go up. The total land impact is the highest of any of these three numbers. So let's upload our cube. It shows up in the recent tab of our inventory. It noted that we paid $11, or we would have if we were on the regular grid. And we're going to drag the cube over here. Now let's see what happens when we put the texture on our cube. Here's our prim cube. We can drag the texture right to one face of that cube. Or We can drag the texture into the texture plane and texture the complete cube all at once. So let's see what happens when we try to do that with our mesh cube. Hmm, that didn't work out too well, did it? This is typically a part where new Blender folks or making any mesh with any 3D uh, application get stuck. Why don't we have this lovely texture on our cube? It's simply because we skip some steps. So let's go back and see what we need to do in order to get our texture to look just the same on our mesh cube. Here we are back where we left off, and it's pretty easy fit so that our cube will look very much like a prim. What we didn't do was we didn't map 
our cube. Remember we made a material and called it cube, but we didn't define how the texture will fit onto our cube, and that's what we have to do. Now most of the time mapping is a pretty complex problem, but for this example, because we're just starting and baby steps are important, all we're going to do is try to get our cube that's mesh to act like a prim, or closer to it anyway. One thing that we need to do, we're now in object mode, we need to switch to edit mode. Now you can do this by going up here or like that, or you can switch from edit mode to object mode just by using the tab key. Tab in, object mode, tab out, edit mode. You can see what the difference is. With our cube in edit mode, we're gonna hit the U key, that's for unwrapping, and we're going to do the simplest form of unwrapping that you can and just say unwrap. Let's look over here at the UV map that we have now. If you look carefully, all the edges line up with the texture plane. This represents a texture, like a 512 texture that you would use in Second Life. It could be a 1024 texture, and later, when we bake things, we'll be making our own textures. But right now, we're just mapping it so that it will take a regular tiling texture in Second Life. If we just click on one face, you can see it goes all the way out to the edges, the way at each one of these little vertices, are at the far edge of the texture plane and they match the vertices over here. If we click on another face, it looks just the same everywhere. How about that? And that's all we needed to do to get our mesh cube to act more like a prim. It's not quite really like a prim yet, but it's getting there. So we're going to go up to File and Save As and I'm going to call this cube upload default. So it has a different name from our last one. And then we're going to export it just like we did before. Remember, you need to go down here. Sometimes it saves it, sometimes it doesn't, but make sure <laughs> that uh, that you have the presets there so that everything will be right or that can cause problems. So we have our name up here and we're going to export the Collada file. 